so this is a references. Uh, this is a list of all references. And uh, uh, actually, I will speak of some new papers where this is old. Ah, this is new, more or less. And ah, and all papers are here. So I will speak uh, about integrable matrix differential equations. This means that the unknowns variables uh, in my uh, equations are matrices of arbitrary size. Uh, a very simple formalization of these objects uh, is related to free associative algebra uh, where we have um, derivation instead of pollution equation and so on. So the formalization is not a big deal. And sometimes I will use the term uh, matrix equation, sometimes non-abelian, sorry, but for me, this is the same more or less. Uh, what is important for me? Um, important point is that all main concepts related to integrable scalar usual differential equations like high symmetries, first integrals, conservation laws, license presentation, Penlevé approach also, I will discuss this as the second part of my talk, can be generalized to the matrix case such that if the size of matrices M, the size of my matrices is equal to one in the scalar case, all these concepts coincide with the usual uh, scalar notion. I can say several words about reasons why um, such integrable models could be important. Uh, several reasons, but I would like to mention two uh, of them. First, any such uh, integrable model has a lot of usual, has a lot of uh, reductions. Uh, since we have uh, matrices of arbitrary size, we can um, additionally assume some special structure of these matrices and so on. And sometimes you have a very simple, for the first glance, a very simple uh, equations uh, on free associative algebra, but after reduction, uh, not, uh, usual reduction like skew symmetricity, you can consider, for example, the eigenvalues uh, of these matrices and so on. And you will can uh, obtain uh, very non-trivial integrable models. And of course, uh, any reduction of integrable model, if this is not trivial, should be integrable. The first uh, reason such models for me are basic models. And you can find a lot of interesting integrable models inside. And second, I can mention about, uh, I can mention recent um, papers by Sasha Mikhailov about quantization of a given classical integrable equation. The quantization, not Poisson brackets, not any uh, structures, just quantization of integrable model. And uh, there are two steps according to Sasha. First step is, first you generalized your scalar integrable model to an integrable model on free associative algebra. And this is just what I want to discuss. And second, if you have something on free associative algebra, you are looking for uh, commu commut commutative relations, which are compatible with the equation. And uh, in this way, you can find the equation uh, related not, not uh, free associative algebras, but on free 
on associative algebra uh, with some proper com uh, commu commutation relations. So, what I should mention before to go to the first example, just this. If in the scalar case, the conserved densities or first integrals are polynomials, well, I will speak on, of, about polynomial models. But in matrix case, this um, conserved densities or first integrals are not non-commutative polynomials, but they are traces of uh, matrix non-commutative polynomials. As usual, you can uh, go to a um, local relation, just this, uh, instead of the definition of conservation law. In the usual case, we have known this term. Uh, and uh, if we integrate this with respect to x, you will find that the functional with the density rho is a constant of motion. But since we have a trace, if we first find trace, we kill this. And after that, if we integrate, we kill this. So actually, and formally speaking, we are uh, working with such functionals, but uh, for uh, computation, of course, this identity is much more uh, okay, now I want to uh, formulate the main idea of non-abilization. Very simple, but uh, I spent several years to, uh, to understand this trivial idea. Suppose you have a scalar differential equation but not arbitrary, but integrable. This means that uh, together with the equation, we consider some algebraic structure, which provides integrability. It could be uh, infinite hierarchy of symmetries of conservation laws, uh, something like Pendleware property, uh, it depends. But what I want to say, that I want to find the matrix equation such that first, uh, in the scalar case, if the size of matrices is one, you will get initial. And second, uh, all structures related to this could be also generalized to non abelian case. If we have infinitely many conservation laws here, uh, we assume that this equation has the same set of conservation laws such that in the scalar case, they go to the conservation laws of this equation and so on. And I want to show that this is uh, really constructive if we are working uh, with polynomial homogeneous or non-homogeneous, it does not matter actually, equations. Let me start from the following example. Uh, if it will be clear, there are some uh, non-trivial points here. Uh, I would say that all, okay. So let's start from the scalar modified, modified KDV equation. It has infinitely many conservation laws. Actually, I will need only two first of them. The first is conservation, uh, conserved density of first order, and this conserved density on second order. Now uh, let's try to find all non abilization in the sense I formulated before. First, I want that non abelian equation is also polynomial and also homogeneous. This equation is homogeneous as a differential polynomial. The weight of U is one and the weight of dx is one. So it has uh, order four, order four, and uh, t should have uh, 
order three, it's homogeneous. And uh, first I want to uh, assume that the non-Iberian equation is also homogeneous. Let's write the general and that. Of course, this is just this. We don't know now the order of factors here. We also have the following term because it has the same, the same homogeneity property as uh, additional. Now we want that it goes to here in the scalar limit. This uh, disappears and uh, to get this, we have the sum of these coefficients just. Okay, now uh, the first computation related to this uh, is very simple. You can make it by hand if you want. First, I want to write a general polynomial, non-commutative polynomial, uh, such that in the scalar case, this coincide with this. And second, I want the trace of this polynomial is the conserved density for our non-abelian equation. About the ansatz, it's easy to see what I should mention. Uh, our density now are defined not only up to total derivatives, but also up to commutators. And if I want to get a polynomial uh, with these properties, it's clear that in non-commutative case, I have only this, no additional terms. Now I want that this is a conserved density and a simple computation shows that this is really conserved density is the following linear relation is fulfilled. From here, we express K4. We have only now three coefficients and first Conserved density give me one relation, linear relation uh, for K3 and K2. And the first impression is that it's so quite trivial because we have a linear equation, but we will see uh, in the second uh, conserved density, with the second conserved density, that actually this is nonlinear problem. Why? Uh, let's try to write a general polynomial on that, uh, which coincide with this if in the scalar case. And uh, this uh, polynomial is defined up to total derivatives and commutators. The simple consideration shows that this is a general on that. And in this on that, we have two parameters arbitrary parameters. Uh, for arbitrary z and y, it goes to, to this in the scalar limit. And uh, for example, this is not the commutator. You can not simplify these terms and these terms by subtraction of commutators. So now we have uh, three, or not, not three, two. Uh, we kill k4. We Q, K, three, for example. So we have two parameters in the equation and two parameters in the conserved density. And the relations that this is a real conserved density is uh, just this system. We have now uh, nonlinear relations for parameters. And uh, you can solve it very easy, easily. And you will find that there are two solutions, two different solutions. And these two solutions correspond to two different non-commutative generalization of the modified KDV equation. They will know the all results. Uh, here I kill this uh, I by scaling, but this corresponds to this, and this corresponds to that. Uh, I would like to mention that first 
uh, papers and a book about non-commutative uh, differential equations, as far as I know, uh, is just this book and the papers of people around Vladimir Marchenko. Uh, he found here, for example, non-commutative uh, KP equation. And in this paper, uh, two different generalization shown were, were found. Okay, uh, what we can ask? I would ask first why all these coefficients are numbers. Is it possible to uh, generalize all this approach to the case when they are uh, constant matrices? Sometimes, yes. And uh, before, I had no good examples of integrable models, matrix integrable models with matrix constant coefficients. But recently, maybe it's uh, new for only for, for us, but we found uh, the following example. Uh, this is generalization of this matrix equation. And here we have an arbitrary uh, matrix B. This is integrable. Uh, we found the lux representation. This is, can be obtained by a Darbu transformation related to uh, non-abelian KDV equation. But if this is a scalar, of uh, course, these terms mm, give me trivial uh, constant multiplied by ux, and they uh, disappear. But in general, this is an interesting integrable model uh, with a matrix, non-trivial matrix coefficient. Okay, now uh, uh, I will try to use this simple idea to find some examples. Uh, let me start from the earlier top. In the scalar case, this is a system of three differential uh, OGEs where uh, these coefficients are related to geometry of the rigid body, but for me, they are um, inessential because by scaling, I can reduce all these coefficients to one and I will do this. What we know about this system, it has two first integrals, quadratic first integrals. And of course, uh, any product of them, any power of them is also first integral trivial, but let's fix this fact. Now I want to generalize this system to the case of matrices. And as before, I assume that the non-commutative system um, is just homogeneous. Uh, in other words, the general answer is here. First of all, we have a set of commutators, possible set of commutators. And also we don't know what is the correct order of this, V, W, or uh, W, V. So this is an ansatz. We have how many? 12 constants. And we want uh, to use the main idea how we can use this. Uh, in the scalar case, we have these first integrals. And I want the traces of all these expressions uh, are first integrals for non uh, commutative system. Again, some straightforward computation give me the following answer. It turns out that we have here a symmetricity and in, instead of nine constants here, we have only three constants here. Again, uh, of course, all these considerations are what I found. 
this is only if you want the necessary conditions for integrability. But now I should prove somehow the real integrability of this model. Uh, how we can do this? We can try to reduce this to a, to a non-integrable model or find lax representation with non-trivial um, spectral parameters. In this case, uh, we found I found the lax representation for arbitrary parameters um, x, y, and z. And as usual, uh, if we have a lax representation, we take the traces of powers of L operator, we get a sequence of first integrals, and they just these traces of uh, non abelizations of these integrals. But uh, in non abelian case, of course, these integrals are not products, are not uh, powers. It's just traces of some homogeneous polynomials such that this polynomials goes to this product in the scalar case. So the next uh, try is our joint paper with uh, Seva Adler. And we try to find all non-commutative generalizations of integrable systems of this kind. Let's consider the following uh, scalar systems, quasi-linear, quasi-linear, I mean, quasi-linear in the first derivative. And um, let's, uh, not me, but uh, these people assume that uh, they want to find all such models uh, which have infinitely many conservation laws. The problem was solved in the more general situation without any quasi-linear assumption. But for me, quasi-linear quasi assumption is important uh, just because uh, it's possible to prove that any such integrable model is polynomial. All these coefficients are polynomials. In general, this is not, but in quasi-linear case, they polynomials. Uh, I don't know uh, what is the correct references because you cannot find this statement uh, in these papers. Uh, moreover, uh, you can find the contraexample to this statement in the paper by uh, Shabbat and Lemila, but this is not contraexample uh, and uh, this is true all of such integrable models are polynomials. And um, let's start from the homogeneous polynomials. Uh, actually, uh, if we know the homogeneous, homogeneous integrable model, we can find the uh, terms of uh, lower degrees very easily. So the homogeneous uh, models are uh, the real the important objects and the, the tails can be reconstructed. Now, uh, let me show the uh, complete list of integrable, scalar integrable models of this kind. Uh -huh. We have actually, we have two lists the so called nonlinear Schrodinger type systems. How many? Five. And uh, uh, the Businesque type systems, what are the formal difference? For example, you can find the difference on the level of uh, flows. All these uh, models has the next commuting, commuting flows has a, uh, order three and uh, four and so on. The same with uh, uh, conserved densities, no gap in conserved densities, in orders of conserved densities. And in the next list, Businesque type, the next commuting flow has order four, no uh, symmetry of 
or the three. And what I should say, um, I want to, to look at this model. We have uh, arbitrary parameters here, not two, because by scaling, we can kill one. But the ratio of alpha and beta are real arbitrary parameters. And uh, now about non-abilization. Uh, this is the answer in some not explicit form. Uh, what we can see here, the first nonlinear Schrodinger has only one non-abilization. Uh, up to some uh, transformation, uh, for example, uh, we can apply tran trans matrix transposition to the equations to get a different system. We will call them equivalent. Uh, so S2 has two different uh, generalization. Here one, one, and now about the model with two parameters. It turns out that generalization exists only for three special values of ratio alpha and beta, one half, zero, and infinity. And in this case, we have, you see how many generalizations, but for uh, other ratios, alpha and beta, no integrable generalization. It's interesting that exactly these numbers correspond to well-known uh, scalar integrable models found by different, I don't, sorry, I don't remember the names. Maybe one of them is related to Kaup and uh, the second to Gerzikov and Ivanov and some, I don't, sorry, uh, but it's they are well known in the scalar case and just them, uh, all of them has a non-commutative generalization. Look here, the first Businesque type system has no local generalizations and the other has the following. Again, I should prove somehow integrability of all these models. And we found, Sia Wagner uh, found actually in our joint paper, he found the lax representations for all these models. Let me show you uh, an example related to what? Related to S4. There are two different non abelian generalization, just these two looks different, but in the scalar limit, they coincide and uh, goes to the fourth equation from the list. And now, uh, the lux pairs in the both cases. Uh, what I can say here, you can ask me a question, uh, why I want to uh, generalize conser conserved densities? Uh, why, for example, I don't try to generalize the lux pairs? You can start from scalar lux pair and try to find uh, homogeneous, non-abelian, and so on. The reason is more or less evident. The conserved densities are unique. Uh, if you fix uh, uh, order, the conserved density is unique up to, as usual, uh, total derivative and so on. This is a rigid object. And we know that there are many different lux representation for the same integrable OG. And nobody knows which of these lux pairs you should generalize. In the situation where you don't know which of the lux pairs you want to get, and uh, what is the non-commutative generalization, you have no the coefficients, it becomes hopeless. But it works with uh, conservation laws and with uh, higher high symmetries also. 
Okay, now uh, I want to say several words. How, what about time? Probably I have time. Uh, this is uh, our joint paper with, we started this research with Sasha Mikhailov, the old paper. We consider this uh, non commutative systems and we want to find the, the best result would be a complete list of such systems with uh, high symmetries. High this means the degree of right hand side, cubic symmetries, fourth degree. And uh, uh, we found in this paper with Sasha, uh, a set of examples, how we are trying to, to find them. First, we consider this system with cubic symmetries. We found six non-equivalent uh, system, systems of this form. After that, we try to uh, find all uh, such that we have no cubic, but we have fourth degree symmetries. More five, if I am not wrong. The next attempt was no cubic, no fourth degree, but fifth degree. It turns out that it's impossible uh, to solve this problem. Computational difficulties are uh, terrible. And it turns out that there are some algebraic relations between coefficients. And we <coughs> finished at this point. <coughs> but now I try to, to solve this problem using my new approach. First, I want to find all integrable scalar models. In the scalar case, we have <coughs> the following systems. And after that, find the non commutative generalizations. But first, what I want to stress, it's a funny question. <coughs> what are integrable scalar models of this, of this kind? <coughs> the first naive reaction is, it's a stupid question. All of them are integrable because if I divide y one by a second, I have the uh, first order homogeneous OGE. And uh, it's known that it can be solved in the quadratures. It does not matter which coefficients we have here. But we need a, a definition of integrability or criterion of integrability such that, such that we can generalize it, this criterion to the non commutative case. The integrability in quadrature is, uh, sorry, <laughs> but I don't know how to generalize this approach how, uh, how to use this fact uh, in the matrix case. But let's uh, recall the standard um, ideas. The first idea, integrable polynomial equation has, integral, uh, has a polynomial first integral. And the second idea, the Penlevé property, the Penlevé test. And to find all integrable scalar models, I want to use both. First of, uh, and the result is given by the following statement. If uh, our scalar equation has polynomial first integral and satisfies the Pelleve, uh, exactly Kovalevsky Lipunov test, I don't want to discuss. Uh, what does it mean? But this is a standard uh, approach in the Penelope test. Then there are only five different possibilities for the first integrals. What I want to stress here, uh, all my systems are defined up to linear transformation by definition. Uh, 
they are equivalent if they are related to the arbitrary linear transformation u and v. And I use this transformation to simplif simplify the integral. It's up to linear transformation, I have only five possibilities for first integrals. And it gives me uh, an exact formula for coefficients uh, in the scalar case. And now I want to generalize all these five cases. What I want to, uh, to require here. Uh, here I am playing with uh, symmetries. In the scalar case, if we have a polynomial first integral, then we have infinitely many symmetries. Just we have right hand side of the equation, we can, can multiply by any uh, polynomial integral, and this is a symmetry. You can say this is a trivial symmetry. Of course, uh, if I fix the value of integral, this is just uh, my equation, nothing more. But if I want to go to a non-commutative case, this is not a trivial idea. I want that non-commutative generalization have just uh, non-commutative symmetries such that in the scalar case then coincide with this, with this infinite set of symmetries. But in, in non-commutative case, of course, the symmetries are not product of the right hand side by the first integrals. We have no first integrals uh, as the polynomial of u and v, and the structural symmetries are non trivial. But I want that in the scalar case, they go to this. Okay, it works. Uh, I want to show the result in the first case. In the first case, in the scalar, the scalar system with this first integral has the following form, the same, up, up to scaling. Now, and we know uh, which symmetries of which uh, degrees we want to get in the non-commutative case, because uh, I want to get uh, the non nonabilization of these symmetries. And the first symmetry has a order or degree five here. And now the standard, my approach. First, the ansatz, what I can add here in the non-commutative case. Uh, if I want that the non-commutative equation still homogeneous, only commutator with unknown coefficients and only coefficients uh, commutator with different coefficients. So I want to consider the following uh, family of e <coughs> systems. And if I want to get the uh, hierarchy of symmetries, I will get the following uh, five different non-equivalent uh, integrable models. Uh, actually, non-equivalent means that uh, no uh, relations like u goes to v, v goes to u, no uh, matrix transposition, but uh, let me show the figure where all possible alpha and beta are are shown. Uh, it could be let me ah. control plus. So all possible uh, pairs of alpha and beta are shown here. They are points on my picture. Uh, the Red points are just um, mentioned in the theorem. And we also have equivalence uh, transformations. Uh, U goes to V, V goes to U. This is symmetry with respect to this line. And trans transposition 
is a just symmetry with respect to this point. And using these symmetries, you can find all these uh, points from these five. This looks very attractive for me. Uh, and many ideas will come uh, to the mind. I don't know. For example, for me, the root system for uh, Lie algebra or root system J2, 11 uh, points, different roots. This is just uh, imaginations, but I like this picture, what I want to say. And uh, we will see that in a different problem related to Pinlever 4, we will get exactly the same set of uh, parameters alpha and beta. Okay. Now, how go to go? Ah, control plus. Now, go back. So uh, we found all generalization in all these cases. Uh, uh, we, this set of models, um, all of our uh, old examples from the paper with Sasha are there. I am cheating a little bit, but not much. Uh, and there are many new integrable models, special with this case, because the first symmetry here in the generalization has the degree eight. In the straightforward approach, it's impossible to find the uh, models with the symmetry of degree eight. Okay, now uh, let me the last part of my talk will be related to the matrix Pinlevé equations. Uh, first, I want to start from the Pinlevé two. This is our joint uh, work with Seewaldler, and after that, we'll say several words about Pinlevé four. This is our uh, research with Irina Bobrova. Uh, let's uh, look at the answer, first of all. Uh, but what about the state of the problem? Uh, let's look first to the homogeneous part of the scalar equation. Uh, suppose I want to generalize the homogeneous part uh, to the non-commutative case. What I can add? I can add such a term because it has also the weight uh, three with unknown coefficients. So uh, here I would add this. And to, also I want to generalize the tail such that the coefficients in the tail, not kappa, it's too much for me, but the coefficients in tails now are constant matrices. So I consider this and that. Uh, and the question is for which kappa B1, B2, and A, this is integrable. Integrable in which sense? Now all first integrals and symmetries does not work, actually, because the Pinlevé equations has no these polynomial objects. But it turns out that we can use the uh, matrix pinlevé kovalevsky test. Uh, I will say several words about uh, what, what is it, but before the answer, it turns out that kappa could be only zero plus minus one and plus minus two. And this is possible uh, matrix coefficients in these three cases. The case number one is known in some sense. And here we have one matrix, arbitrary matrix, and one constant. In the second 
uh, case, we have one matrix here. And in the third case, we have two matrices related by these commutative relations. Plus corresponds to plus here. What about references? First about uh, this uh, equation and about uh, matrix can give a test. Uh, the uh, non-commutative version of Penliver 2 was found in this paper. Uh, actually, they uh, are speaking about non-commutative independent variables. They want to think that, but I don't understand actually what does it mean. Sorry, I understand that this is important, but in this paper, they call that non-commutative variables is just a symbol such that the derivative of this is just one. But I can solve this. This is just commutative variables plus arbitrary matrix, constant matrix. And if we uh, substitute in this model from this paper, instead of non-commutative uh, independent variables, commutative multiplied by uh, unity matrix plus arbitrary uh, constant matrix, you will get exactly the model number one. And about uh, the matrix spin lever test, I don't know. Again, maybe there are some references before, but uh, we used this approach in our paper at the time to find the non commutative pin level one. And if we would be clever, we would uh, find all these pin level two models. But unfortunately, we did not consider the constant matrix coefficients. Now, what does it mean? In the scalar case, uh, now uh, of system of equations of our type, we want that there is a formal series of this um, form with two arbitrary constants that not is one of these constants and another constant should be in the coefficients. Let's do exactly the same. Let's try to uh, look for the matrix case, look for these solutions where P and the coefficients are matrices now. And we want that it contains the maximum number of arbitrary constants. Uh, the uh, this number is just 2m square if the matrices are m by m size. One of them is here. Some of these constants are here, and some of them in, the, in these coefficients. Uh, let's imagine how it works. If we substitute this to, um, to an equation, nine, we will get first the relations for residue. It should be like a projector. And after that, we will get uh, recursive relations for the coefficients. And uh, this is the right-hand side depending on the previous coefficients. And here we will have more or less the same linear operator with the um, eigenvalue, not exactly the same. Uh, actually, uh, we will have some difference here. This is the definition of this operator. Sigma is just uh, parameter. And this is operator to the set of matrices. P is fixed and uh, it map C to, to this. And now we are uh, 
have the same game as here, but we should use a linear algebra. First of all, how many arbitrary constant we will find here. And second, it's clear that arbitrary constants here uh, can be appear only if this operator is degenerate. In this case, the homogeneous equation linear system has non-trivial solution and they are just candidates for the arbitrary constants. Uh, so first of all, let's start from, from this. It's easy to see that the Jordan form of this is diagonal. And uh, the calculations of arbitrary constant show that only if P is a matrix of rank one, we have a chance to get a maximum number of parameters. And second, we can uh, investigate the spectral properties of this operator. We can find all resonance, all J and all kappa such that it has the uh, solutions in the homogeneous case. And we work uh, in this way to get uh, our, our answer. Uh, the exposition is an archive and uh, I don't remember or no, this is not, this is not published yet, but it will be published in theoretical mathematical physics in a couple of months. Now several words about Pinlewe form. So this is the Pinlewe four equation with two, it's in the scalar case, with two parameters. But now uh, I can not apply the same procedure to for the gen matrix generalization of this because of two reasons. First, it's unclear which ansatz in the non-commutative case I should uh, consider here. And second, I don't know how to substitute to here a formal series where the residue is the degenerate matrix of uh, rank one. Maybe it's possible, but I don't know. Uh, so this is a answer, not a priori on that, but uh, we will get several examples of Pinlewe four matrix equations of this, of this kind with a special uh, matrix coefficients A, B, C, and so on. But instead of them, uh, we want to consider the polynomial systems. It's well known that in the scalar case, uh, this is equivalent to the following Hamiltonian. It does not matter for me uh, to, the, to this system. And now I want to generalize these systems and look to, to the answer. What I want to stress, if we consider, to consider the leading part of this system, this is just the system from our paper with Wolf. But uh, also we have some linear tail here. Okay. Uh, and now what is the next non-trivial point I want to show? If we consider the scalar system, it has a formal uh, Laurent solutions uh, not unique. There are three different uh, kinds. Uh, in the first uh, solutions, we have non-trivial residues in both U and V, and we have also two. Uh, here is a Taylor series, and uh, in V, we have a, a residue. And uh, 
what we should ask from our non-commutative generalization. We should ask all three non-trivial maximum Laran solutions, or only one, or what? The answer is more or less clear. We consider the following uh, systems with unknown matrices here, 10 matrices, and uh, also computators like uh, in our paper with Wolf. And now we use uh, first the requirement that there exists of the similar uh, solutions like this, like this, like this. And uh, we can skip this, uh, but maybe not, because in this case, for residues P, Q, we will get a non trivial uh, matrix algebraic systems, and it will not a uh, uh, very simple problem to find all matrix solutions of such quadratic system. But if we assume that P and Q are diagonal, both diagonal, then you will immediately get that they have this um, form. You can find again, like, like in previous case, that both of them should be matrices of the rank one, both P and Q, and, uh, and so on. Uh, but now uh, the non-trivial uh, point, let's go back, about uh, three types of solutions. It turns out that if we assume that our non-commutative equations has three maximum solutions of both of all three types, we will lose something. Uh, if we ask only for one maximum series, it's not, it's not enough. But if we ask uh, that our system has two maximum solutions, this and this, this and this, this and this, we will get for alpha and beta exactly the same nice picture uh, like in the paper with Wolf. This is not uh, very surprising, actually. If we consider the, um, if we consider the homogeneous part of uh, Pendeleve equation, Pendeleve system, this is integrable in all senses. Homogeneous part has first integral, it has symmetries. And uh, that's why the fact that we, uh, and this alpha and beta, they are in homogeneous part of Pendeleve equations. Uh, so it's not very surprising that they are coincide with the parameters from our paper from Wolf, where we use the symmetries. But also the same set of parameters appeared in the Pindleve approach. Again, the problem, how to go back. Okay, but this is the end of my talk. Uh, I will try to, uh, what I want to say about this nice picture, uh, when we try to solve the uh, matrix uh, quadratic systems for residues without any assumptions that they compute or they are diagonal, you will find that uh, the solutions of these systems, which are not commute with each other, uh, exist only for this again, again uh, for these sets of alpha and beta from the from the paper or from the from the picture. 
So I know at least four different considerations where the same picture with uh, the set of alpha beta appeared. Probably it's something important. So that's all what I can say today. Volodya, thank you very much. Are there any questions? So let me... Volodya, to, to what extent it is important to the uh, dealing with these main nations, not like that the realization of uh, uh, Victor... Is... Sorry, sorry, it's impossible to, to understand something with voice. <clears throat> Uh, Victor, there is some technical problem with sound. Uh, you you can hear my question. Very, so, very noisy. Maybe you can just type your question. Okay, I, I'll repeat. Uh, to what extent it is important that you are dealing with matrices, not arbitrary social functions? Well, it's clear. You can okay. uh, okay. 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 yeah, 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 you can consider instead of this uh, any associative algebra, and if the reduction is non-trivial, it should be uh, integrable as usual. But I cannot claim that there are no more uh, integrable models uh, for associative algebras with these relations. The algebra should be free. That's it. Yeah. Uh, so, so if you if you go for, from free algebras to matrix algebras, you get more integrable equations, or you don't know. Uh, let me explain my point. In my consideration, I consider uh, the equations which are integrable for any size of matrices. In this case, uh, this is equivalent uh, to okay. the approach of uh, free associative algebras. But uh, for the exact size of matrices, say M equal to three, there are some algebraic relations between yeah. matrices. And uh, the result could be new integrable models which are not here because of these relations. Mm. Okay. Uh, Valody, I have uh, I have some uh, some uh, question which is important to me. Uh, in my picture of integrability, there is some concept of Poisson structure which is important on the classical level and which is. Uh, 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 getting tool to to find a good quantization in some sense. So here there is no Poisson structure. Uh, is it uh, accidental or uh, the method is universal without such uh, such subtleties? <laughs> so you see, in my approach, we don't need any Hamiltonian properties. And more, uh, furthermore. Uh, in this approach, I can find not only uh, systems like um, the V, which are integrable by the inverse scattered me method, but also the Bur Burgers type systems. They also appear here if I use the uh, high symmetries for non abelization There are some uh, possibility to, to generalize somehow the Poisson structures. And um, here I can show to our recent, not recent paper with 
Sasha Desky, where we generalized, uh, probably you know that there is a special class of Poisson brackets, so elliptic brackets found by Fagin and uh, Adesky. They are important because, for example, rational uh, Poisson brackets could be obtained by some limits and so on. And in our paper, we found a non-commutative generalization of all uh, Poisson structures, elliptic Poisson structures, just uh, by found by Fagan and Adesky. Uh, in this case, uh, it's possible to, uh, I don't say about quantization, but non-abilization of uh, given Poisson structures are possible, but it's a bit different approach and uh, different, completely different technique. <clears throat> and again, we can use maybe the idea by Sasha Mikhailov, if we have a, a non abilization of elliptic Poisson algebras, maybe we can ask for additional commutation relation to the algebra to get more or less quantum situation. It's a good, good question, but... But, but you mean, uh, uh, by non-commutative Poisson algebra, you mean that the multiplication is not commutative and there is some uh, least structure which is uh, uh, compatible? Not exactly. Uh -huh. uh, this, this is the first idea and the different people try to generalize the Poisson brackets to the case of arbitrary associative algebras, but uh, it does not work because the answer is empty. No such generalization, more or less. There is a negative result. And the approach uh, was considered by Maxim Kantsevich uh, 20 years ago. And is, this is related, related uh, again with traces, not polynomials, with traces. All uh, uh, structures could be uh, formulated in terms of of traces, and the form formalization of traces is the uh, quotient space of free associative algebra over the vector space of computator, and so on. This is the way to to give a reasonable non abilization But isn't true that uh, you just should consider double Poisson algebras? They work very well. This is uh, this is the way, uh, but uh, let me explain. But this is not a correct uh, in general um, point of view. Uh, I can explain. Uh, there are two different generalization type, types of generalization, non-commutative generalization. Uh, in all cases, we will get some Poisson brackets on traces of matrices. Let's right. speak of matrices. But sometimes it's possible to uh, to lead to the uh, Poisson brackets between entries of these matrices, and sometimes not. Sometimes we have only Poisson brackets on traces. If you uh, are speaking about the uh, Second, second means that we can lift these brackets to the entrances of all these matrices. In this case, this is equivalent to uh, double Poisson brackets approach. But uh, in some sense, the first where we have only structures on traces, it's more non-trivial, more important. And in this case, we have no the parallel with double Poisson brackets, as far as I know. This is not just generalization of uh, Poisson brackets by Van der Berg 
he considered quasi Poisson breakage. This is not the movement to a proper direction. So there is some interesting uh, game here. So you 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 say that it's closer to some uh, categorification, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, it's it's too deep for me. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Jim. So it's natural to 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 consider uh, uh, some queerization of uh, of the system. So instead of the trace, you can consider the the com the, com the complex with uh, vector spaces with uh, morphisms between them, something so like. Pro probably this is a, a scientific way for quantization. But I would prefer to try uh, Sasha's <laughs> yeah, simply to uh, to look for uh, additional relations in free associative algebra, which are compatible with the Poisson structure. That is more safe. I, ne I never try, but I would try it first. Um. I was just wondering, do you have uh, lax pairs for your non-commutative Pallavet equations? I, we have the lax pairs, isomenodromic lax pairs for yes. all, all P2 equations. Yes. And we are planning to find the uh, lax pairs for all uh, P4 systems. With, uh, is... with Thomas Wolf, perhaps. With... <laughs> Ah, in the uh, the paper with Wolf is not good in this sense. Too many no. systems, they are integrable in a different sense. Some of okay. them integrable, uh, they are, some of them are linearizable, some of them yeah. is. And uh, of course, this is a lack of our consideration. We <laughs> the proof of integrability only for some of them. But in this mm -hmm. case, we are trying to prove integrability by, by the lux representations, something like that. We will study. Ah, yeah. uh, thank you. And for P, for P2, they are in our Yes, case. yes. Thank you. Uh, Volodin, thank you very much. It was. Uh, very interesting and very thank promising. You very, thank, thank you very much for the invitation. Mm -hmm. Thank you all and uh, goodbye. Mm.